Hey everyone, my name is Chris and today we're going to be talking about VESC based controllers and the advantages that they have over a traditional e-bike controller. I've personally installed four of them on different e-bike builds so far and I can say that I've learned a lot about what to do and what not to do on these controllers. So let me show you what I've learned and hopefully help you decide if this is the right controller for your next PEV build. Now first off, let's talk about how this is different from your average e-bike controller. This thing we called a VESC is simply a ESC, which stands for Electronic Speed Controller. This particular controller is running an open source software created by Benjamin Vetter, hence the V in VESC. Simply put, this firmware allows the user to configure all sorts of battery and motor combinations to maximize both power and efficiency. Now what most people are used to using is a standard brushless DC controller, like this one. This is what came installed on my bike and it uses a square wave style of power output which sends signal from the battery to the motor along the phase wires. Now this essentially pulls the magnets inside of the motor in the direction of rotation of spinning the wheel and these controllers the dc signal can be torquey but it is inefficient and while it does allow for a higher top speed that top speed will always be limited by the voltage of the battery now part of the reason a lot of people are flocking to this controller is because of how much power it puts out for its size the reason that this controller is so much more powerful than the old e-bike controller is because of how many amps it can put out now if you're new to this hobby one thing that you should know about making power is that it comes down to two simple numbers volts and amps. Those two multiplied by each other makes power. Now voltage is the number of volts that your battery has and this is usually measured by the nominal voltage something like 48 volts or 72 volts and that's the average voltage at its resting capacity of about 50 percent. And then there's amps. Amps are the number of electrons that are flowing through the wires going to the motor or controller, and it directly relates to the amount of torque that you can supply on a motor. Volts, on the other hand, directly correlates to the speed that a motor will be able to achieve, and hence a higher voltage will allow a motor to spin faster, and that's why you see a lot of people upgrading their e-bikes from 48 volts to 72 volts. But now back to this controller. Not only does this controller emulate the square wave style of power that a standard DC controller uses, but it also has a FOC style of output, and that stands for Field Oriented Control. Basically what that means is that it smooths out the power going to the motor and uses a sine wave of power output rather than a trapezoidal like you might see here. Now with this style of control, you do end up getting more torque and more efficiency at the sacrifice of top speed. But that's something that we can rectify later by using field weakening in the VESC firmware. And that's a special function which supplies power backwards through the phase wires of the motor, hence decreasing the flux field created by the magnets spinning at such a high rate of speed. And by decreasing that flux field, we're able to pull the magnets further faster and allow that motor to achieve a higher theoretical top speed than it should achieve on just regular battery voltage alone. It's a little bit complicated. You do end up having to put more amps through the motor and it can cause some overheating, but it's a very cool feature for unlocking that higher top speed at no expense of changing the battery voltage. So this controller can put out more power than a similar size standard e-bike controller and it has multiple modes of controlling the motors whether that be a brushed motor or a brushless motor and it has tons of user adjustments that allow you to customize how the power will be put down. And now most people watching this video are probably here because they were interested in putting a flip ski controller on their bike but this isn't the only manufacturer that creates VESC boards. Actually you can also find them available on other websites like Ali express made by companies like MakerBase, and while they use all of the same firmware the hardware might be a little bit different but it should put out the same amount of power now MakerBase, while their prices are cheaper you will be ordering them direct from china so it's going to take longer to arrive and besides that they also only make a limited variety of controllers whereas flipski which you can find on amazon they make tons of different controllers with power output that goes all the way up to 300 500 phase amps so just make sure that when you're ordering the controller for your build that you make sure you order the correct one. The biggest confusion that people get is how many amps you can actually put out through the controller. 
For example, the 75100 controller, although it says it's rated for 100 amps, it's more rated for 100 motor phase amps, whereas when you do the math, it comes out to more like 30 or 40 line amps from the battery that it's really going to be consuming or drawing. Now to get around that, you can upload some no hardware limited firmware, and that's going to allow you to push those numbers beyond what the factory hardware should potentially go through. Uh, but you can run into issues by overheating the controller or blowing up one of the MOSFETs that's on the circuit board. So take that with a grain of salt. If you're looking to push closer to let's say 80 or 90 amps out of your battery, I would recommend the 75200 controller. That one is good for about 200 to 300 phase amps of power. But again, that's depending on the voltage of your battery so just keep that in mind the more volts you're pushing the less amps you should probably safely push through that controller now onto wiring now all of your controllers are going to come with three phase wires at least two battery wires and then about six or seven different connectors which allow you for all the different inputs and outputs for this controller these other optional inputs and outputs are things like the cruise control brake levers throttle your usb input and more in order to get this controller working with your e-bike though you're only going to need to wire in your battery motor and throttle those are the basics but if you want to wire an on off switch for example you'll need to either purchase an anti-spark switch or one of the Flipski controllers that has a built-in switch to turn the controller itself on and off. Otherwise, most of these controllers will just stay on if you have the battery connected, and you don't wanna do that because you could unnecessarily drain the battery. If you wanna use regenerative braking, for example, then you may also choose to add a brake input. Throttle and brake inputs are gonna be added onto the ADC channels. ADC stands for Analog to Digital Control and it converts the twist of the throttle into a voltage reading that the controller can translate into a power output for the motor. ADC1 on the controller is usually gonna be your throttle input, and ADC2 is usually gonna be your brake or your reverse input. You can also use a switch to toggle the throttle into forward or reverse mode if you're building something like a skateboard or a go-kart. Now, some of the things that you'll find lacking on this controller, which comes standard on normal e-bike controllers, are things like a battery level indicator or any type of display. Although you can get a display for a Flipski controller, the ones that they offer are very limited and they're not exactly made for e-bike builds, but they do provide onboard data if you're trying to build something, again, like a, a go-car or a skateboard or some other application. Also, keep in mind that there's usually no built-in switch to turn these controllers on or off. So unless you ordered one of the Pro V2 controllers, which will come with a key switch or button to turn it on and off, then you will have to separately get an anti-spark switch, which will regulate the voltage from the battery and turn it off when you're not using your bike. Also, if you want a voltage display, you're gonna have to find another way of tapping into that battery readout using a switch and turning that display on so that you can get a reading of how much battery is left. Now, one thing that most e-bike controllers don't come with is Bluetooth capabilities. So that's something that you can either order with your controller or you can add on separately using a little Bluetooth dongle. And that gives you full customization and onboard data at your phone. So using the app, which is I think just a couple of dollars, you'll be able to see your speed, change your settings, how much battery you have left, all that on your phone. Now, what some people do is they'll get like a small phone and use that as a cheap little display, or they'll just get a phone mount for their handlebars and run their phone as their display when they're riding. Now, if you want a full wiring guide in depth, leave a comment down below and I can make a separate video going into that. It's pretty simple, but you do have to use a little bit of setup wizards and you have to understand which pins and which color wires you're gonna be using for your inputs and outputs. So comment down below if you wanna see that. So now let's talk about programming because these controllers are not plug and play with your e-bike motor and they will need to be tuned out of the box. Now, when I say tuning, I mean using the motor setup wizard to read the configuration of the motor and then also mapping your throttle to the correct ADC channel. Now, after that, you'll probably want to customize the power output settings by tweaking the maximum number of amps that you can pull from the battery. And you can also play with the phase amps, which is the maximum number of amps that will be sent through the phase wires into the motor. These values are different because of how the controller uses a duty cycle to pulse the voltage on and off. And honestly, I don't understand it all myself, but your phase amps from what I've learned can be more than the battery amp. So for example, I can set my battery amps to be 30, 
but my phase amps to 100. And when I hit the throttle from a dead stop, the phase amps will peak at 100, but as my bike accelerates, they will come down. Now this is because of the controller reaching its maximum duty cycle for that battery and motor configuration. And honestly, I don't have an electrical engineering degree, so I'm not gonna sit here and give you a lesson about how all these things work. But what I will tell you is that this controller has a ton of customization options. And the more that you learn about how to tweak them, the more power and performance you're gonna be able to extract. Now, if all this sounds unfamiliar and you don't feel comfortable tuning your bike yourself, don't worry because the motor setup wizard and the throttle setup wizard are both really easy to use. And as long as you haven't changed the stock firmware from your controller out of the box, they should be really simple to just get the motor spinning. And then you might just wanna change like one or two numbers. If you do need more help, however, VESC does have its own forums where people are communicating about how they're making changes on their controllers and getting them set up. Or there's also Facebook groups where more and more people are adopting this controller and they might be able to help you there as well. Now, finally, let's talk about the performance once you get these controllers installed. And let me tell you that you will not be disappointed if you purchase the right one. Again, you wanna make sure that you have the right controller output for your application. If you need something from zero to 40 amps, I'll say go for the 75, 100. If you're looking to push something closer to 100 battery amps, go for the 75, 200 series of controllers. And if you wanna push even more than that, they have a 75, 350, and I think that they're releasing even more in the future. These controllers all operate exactly the same. They're all wired exactly the same. They just have different circuit boards that have different MOSFETs to handle more or less power. So now let me show you some of my rides and VESC based builds. My main ride is a Mototech 1600 watt bike pushing 3000 watts of power with a 52 volt battery at 60 amps and 200 phase amps. I used to have this controller set at more phase amps, but the torque was almost uncontrollable for smooth wheelies. It's been really reliable, smooth power, and I have the Pro Series 75200 controller, which came with integrated Bluetooth, so I've got the app to change the settings on the fly. Some of the wiring is kind of messy in here since I'm using an anti-spark switch, I have external lights, brake lights, and a voltage display all tapped in. And again, these are outputs that do not come with the Flipski, so it's required that you do some custom solutions to have it run off of battery power. Next up, I've got this pink Razer MX650 with a Vivor motor and the 75100 controller. This one has the no hardware limits firmware and I have the battery amps set to 40 with 120 phase amps of power. It's smooth, doesn't overheat, and it'll reach up to 30 miles an hour. It is lacking the battery amps to make full use of the field weakening function, but if I were to push it any harder with a bigger battery, I may risk overheating the controller. Luckily, these controllers do have a built-in temp sensor and safety programming to avoid being damaged this way. Now on this bike as well, I did wanna mention, since I'm not pushing many amps, I was able to reuse the factory on off switch to regulate the power going to the controller. Otherwise I'd need an anti-spark switch because this is the non V2 version. Lastly, we have this reconfigured Jetson bolt motor on a Burrowmax TT350 frame. This was a fun little side project that I put together because I wanted to experiment with a micro mobility build and use regenerative brakes as the only means of stopping the bike. While it does work great and it did gain a couple miles an hour over the factory controller, the regen is very weak because the battery that's currently installed wouldn't be able to take much more than two or three amps regen. I worry with these small Chinese batteries that too much regen might damage the BMS board or even the cells inside. So I recommend against using regen on a battery that you're not sure might handle it. Otherwise, I do especially notice that on this bike, the VESC is much more efficient than the square wave controller and the motor is able to spin up much faster with the right tune. Now, finally, we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of this controller, starting out with the pros. This series of VESC-based controllers offer plenty of customization. No matter what you wanna change, whether that be your throttle sensitivity or how your motor spins up, 
It is a budget friendly controller because again, it is kind of simpler. It's able to come at a lower price point than something like a Kelly controller or a far driver. It's efficient, but also powerful. Like I said, these are a much better option than a standard square rave controller if you're looking to upgrade. And they can also run multiple types of motors. So it would work with virtually any electric build, whether it's a hub motor, an outboard motor, if it's a brushed motor, it doesn't matter. One last thing too I wanna to mention is that the firmware continues to be updated. So you'll always have new features coming along and when things start to break, you can either change to a new firmware or change to an older one that was working for you. So this is a product that's gonna have support into the future and continue to offer more and newer features. Now some cons is that number one, the wiring is not straightforward. You know, you have all these connectors on the board and it doesn't just say throttle, brake, on off switch like most controllers would. They're not labeled and you do have to understand how to do the wiring for them. Another thing is that this controller lacks e-bike focused features. So you don't have like a light output or a switch like I was saying to turn the controller on and off. And that can be a little bit of a pain for people who are new to the hobby and still learning about wiring and making soldering connections. Another thing is that tuning can either go smoothly or it can be a pain in the butt. Now the setup wizards, they're great, but they only get you so far. And like I said, if you update the firmware to the wrong firmware for the controller or something that it wasn't meant for, then you're gonna have an issue where the setup wizard will not work anymore and you'll have to manually tune that motor and get it to run. Another thing is that because these are controllers are so small and they put out good power, they do lack some of that cooling that you might find on like a far driver controller. There are no fins or ways to dissipate the heat, but if you do end up ordering a larger controller like the 75350, those can come with built-in cooling channels for liquid cooling, or what some guys do is that they'll mount these controllers to their frames. That way the frame of your bike or whatever build you have can absorb some of the heat from the controller and pull it away while you're riding. Last thing too, my biggest complaint with this controller is the fact that when rolling backwards, it has some sort of safety start where it will not allow the user to put throttle to get the motor to go forwards. So when I'm at a light and I'm just playing around and I'm rolling my bike backwards, it will not allow me to engage power. And that can be a little bit inconvenient and I'm sure that there's a setting out there to change that, whether it be in the app or just a line of code in the software that you might have to manually change. I'm sure it can be changed, but it's just one of those things, one of the signs that this is an open source project, it's continually being developed, and while it's made for lots of different applications, it may not be specifically suited to your application unless you're willing to put in the time to configure it that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video and hopefully learned something about VESC based controllers. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. And if you wanna see more ones like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. I hope everyone has an amazing day and we will see you next time.